Okay, greetings my illustrious chess friends and welcome to this video number three on the Coley Mainline opening. As we know the Coley is a d4 opening and here let us just leech the mainline position. Now bt2, in this particular game former world champion Max Hugh I forgive, or I ask forgiveness if I have not pronounced that name correctly. But uh, Max played uh, bishop to e7. Castled. Castled. And here we have reached the Coley mainline position. And here we do what? Take on c5. Yep. Avoiding an isolated queen pawn. And now we play e4, freeing our bishop here on c1. Now we've learned from previous videos that it is not good for black to go into an ending. An ending is good for us. And black has various ideas of his own. And what he will do is he will begin a struggle for the e5 point. And he can do this immediately by simply occupying the e5 point. And we'll look at this idea in this video. Other ideas are he can go for peace control of the e5 point. This we call the old main line. And after we play something like queen to e2, he has another cunning idea. He can play a waiting move like h6 hoping that we play e5 ourselves, where he will gang up on this advanced e-pawn, which is quite difficult for us to defend. And this we call no trespassing, because he does not want us to trespass in his territory. So these are some ideas that Black has for controlling or occupying the e5 point. Now, as we've said, he can simply do this with the move e6, e5. But this reduces his possibilities because now we can simply take on d5. Oops, that queen should be there. And he can either take with the queen. And after queen e2, this simply transposes into some other lines that we'll look at in other videos. Or he can take with the knight, and this we call the knight d5 line. And this is what we are going to concern ourselves with in this video. Now this knight here can often be exploited because of its position. If the f point ever moves, it can be pinned against the king, like this. And in its current position, something like this transpires, it can often be pinned against the queen. And it's a theme in this line, a tactical theme. And in the game that we are going to look at, uh, Master Coley exploits this excellently against former world champion Max Yu. So let's take a look at that game. Okay, let me just put this back. So we played e takes d5, knight takes d5. Here Master Coley played the knight to e4, developing his knight with tempo. And this bishop went back to e7. Now, if you look at this knight, it's being absolutely dominated by this bishop. It is no squares it can go to. So Master Coley decides to reroute this bishop. First to g3. And then he has perhaps ideas of routing it to f5. And here, former world champion Max Hugh plays a very aggressive move. He plays f5. 
And here you see this idea of pinning this knight because Master Coley plays bishop to c4, immediately making use of this tactical resource. Max played bishop to e6. Rook e1 was played, hitting this pawn here a second time. The pawn advanced to e4. Of course, this knight cannot be touched because this bishop has no defender. And Master Coley played bishop to g5. Well, Max Yu played his king, getting out of this, this pin. Dark square bishops were exchanged. And here, Master Coley played the excellent knight to d4, putting further pressure on this undefended piece, which is pinned. Queen b6 was played, and Queen b3 piling the pressure on this pinned piece. The bishop could take it no more and went to g8. Rook came to the centre along the open d file. And Queen g6 was played. Knight c2, unleashing a discovered attack against this knight here. And the knight could stand it no more and went to b6. Bishops were exchanged. And the rook came to d4. h5, trying to take advantage of the position of this knight here. Master Coley stopped that idea dead in its tracks with h4 himself. Knight came to h6 and doubled rooks on the d-file. Queen g4 was played. a4, trying to take advantage of the precarious position of this knight here. Rook came to c8 and knight to e3. And here the queen took this pawn here and this looks real trouble for white. Look at this fork is in the air here. a5, hitting the knight, ignoring these threats, f4, and rook takes e4. Of course, these knights are immune because of the pin on the queen. Queen went to g5, and a takes b6, f takes g3, and here Master Coley played f takes g3 and I don't think this is the best move in fact a better move would have been simply f3 and white has more active pieces and his queenside pawn majority can become a real real threat after something like this These two pawns can simply advance up the board, create a pass pawn, and white's in real good shape. But this, in fact, never happened. And what Master Coley, in fact, played was f takes g3, a takes b6, rook to d5, queen takes g3, and although white retains some advantage in the position, his king is far too exposed for him to be able to do anything with these queenside pawns. 
and after rook to h5, a draw was in fact the result. And White, of course, has no time whoops, to take this pawn because after something like rook to a8, well, he's simply facing mate on the back rank. So, a very, very interesting game which highlights the theme of pinning this knight. And we saw that if we can just reach the mainline position quickly. That this idea of blacks of playing an immediate e5 doesn't come without some drawbacks. Okay, he frees his own bishop. But we can reduce his possibilities immediately by taking on d5. And if he takes with the knight, we have ideas of pressuring the e-pawn, or in this case, using the position of the d5 knight for some tactical resources. And Master Coley did this admirably in this game. We reached this position here. So hopefully that throws some ideas on this knight d5 line where black tries to occupy the e5 square immediately with the pawn thrust e6 e5 and watch out for the position of this knight and hopefully you can use tactical ideas of pinning this knight either against the queen if for example a heavy piece ever came to the d file or in this case against the king because of the advance of the f pawn In the next videos, what we will look at, oops, is what happens when black tries to take peace control of the e5 point with the old mainline idea of queen to c7. After this, of course. So once again, my chess friends, I thank you very much for watching this little chess video and I hope you get something from it. Take care and I wish you well with your own chess.